Okay, so here we have a little side game. We just had a tournament game here in the Allied Final Tournament. This is a little side uh, game just while we fill. As you can see, Molo just posted that they're ready. Uh, as in that they have a match team ready. Uh, they just played uh, with Team Argonaut getting an Axis win over our Team Gunner. Uh, so here, Gun getting his tanks lured. Probably just a little distracted right now. Probably Molo's messaging him. Uh, so a little unfortunate on that one. Uh, if you probably already started these bunkers, you wouldn't want to put these there if you uh, had lost all your tanks. But it's putting all his buildings down here. Uh, so I just faced this hold. I believe uh, defeat did it on me, and uh, it did uh, it did pretty well. So I, there are some experiments going on with this type of hold. It's uh, is disappointing as you lose all your all your buildings. In the, in the exchange of getting more kills. Definitely want to get these drops out of here. Uh, but because of those early tanks uh, that were lured, uh, there's nothing that was going to happen there. Uh, he's using uh, Spain using APM to get early Crete. I like that innovative stuff. Very different. Get a tax. I think it's worth about 200. Uh, didn't get a first turn, but we'll be able to pick it up uh, at least probably for the next two turns. Generally, you don't start getting allies dropping here till uh, turn three or four. Depends, of course, how quickly you're breaking, and uh, this uh, Napoleon gunner team will be breaking pretty fast. With Napoleon doing a lot of the heavy lifting here. Uh, taking out all five of the bunkers, including the siege tank, with tanks to spare. So, nice Egypt hold. Chris doing a little bit of poke. He's trying to distract Kron Toker. Kron playing his patented Russia. Also known for his Italy. Imagine right after this, we're going to be doing the second match of the day. We're going to be doing the reverse, having Team Gunner as Axis and Team Argonaut as allies. So, not wanting that next Russian attack to break. Respecting the Kron Toker Russia, also respecting that he's not going to go bulks. Uh, pretty large investment here in, in bunkers. Axis already start, stopped the Goliath trigger. Five drops, sixth one just made. So a total of seven here. Got a drop ready, nice and early, right before uh, the Mediterranean trigger, so you can still drop and then and then reload to stop the trigger. It's ideal as Spain if you could do that. But look, Exo's already gotten a drop off successfully, so that's the from the good Spain to the truly great Spains. Great Spains will be able to get uh, two drops in before the med trigger and make and then stop the med trigger and drop right after it. Uh, whereas uh, more defensive, mediocre Spains or Spains that lose a lot in the France attack don't get a drop off until after uh, the Mediterranean trigger. Of course, it's normally a fairly large drop, but uh, three drops versus one, uh, you're able to generally get more objectives. Exo, Exo with the science vessel, being able to knock out these spider mines. Just deciding to drop two triggers worth of men or two drop ships, just so it helps clear out the mines. So very calculated. 
Meanwhile, while this is going on, Kron going Balks. Uh, not liking to see all these tanks stacking here, uh, but he would have liked seeing all, all those bunkers and BCs even less on East. Uh, so this is going to be a very, very good stop here for the Axis. Uh, Axis, so Axis won the, the last game I casted here, game three of the tournament, and they look in great position to be able to, uh, to win this game. Sees here, has an eighth. UK drop, extremely successful. Always not wanting to let this go just yet. XO has been known to be very heavy on uh, bunkers and missile turrets. So we're going to see if he does Fortress Britain like he sometimes likes to do. I should just be supply depot, yep. Meanwhile, we do have med going on at zero. Goliath saying go up, but Exo's probably saying med. That's why a little bit of change there. Scout's getting in there just in time. We're going to be able to clear this one out nicely. All these Spitfires weren't able to, uh, to come up and nothing is going to get away from this and now Exo is going to have the big drop, the big one right after uh, the Mediterranean. But look, he's already got Crete, he's already got half of England. That's before Med. Oh, Wrath very unusually uh, coming down into this area, he's going to get rewarded with a lot of Pris's buildings. This is some really good game knowledge by Napoleon. Uh, either being preemptive with uh, sending them towards here, or knowing that Chris is going to have all those buildings. It's not a fight that he wants with the uh, with the ground moving this way, but uh, he's going to quite like the trade he got getting a number of Chris's buildings. Most importantly, that engineering bay and the command center. Got his other command center right up here. Yam's got a drop ready. Full 12 drops. Should be enough. Raph trying to snipe out Exo's drops. He gets two. Gonna cover his own Norwegian drops. Getting hit a little bit by the ground. Not too, too much. And being able to hold UK there. Meanwhile, Chris using his APM going down into Africa. Uh, he's able to do this because he does have his BCs there. Decides to stop after crushing the army. Uh, which some of it got to escape, but uh, was able to get most of it. It's either going to reposition some sort of bunker wall down here with keep the BCs down, uh, or he might head back up uh, towards the eastern front. Um, I guess he's going to keep the BCs uh, in Africa. Probably should have took them up and uh, and fought the, and taken out Athens here. But here he's focused on repositioning the wall. There's Gunners calling Italy BC's Africa. There's Malo wanting to get a second match going. And, uh, we got a great game here and I'm glad to be casting it. But uh, these are the type of high level games that we're seeing when we're uh, when we get a tournament going on. And I, I felt it playing some of the games today. Uh, the first two games of the day, getting uh, playing Spain and getting Spain dropped both games. First game losing uh, Command Center and SCV, getting Algeria hold and uh, UK dropped right onto Madrid. So I don't think that Yams has a SCV here, but he should be getting one. Definitely be one in there. 
while Gunner is going to be trying to break this wall, but he's not going to like the sight of this. Oh, see? I didn't see the SCV either there, Yance. We'll pick up some of the cash for you, kid. There you go, dropping it off. So taking it first turn, taxing it second. Uh, but this looks to be about fourth turn right now. But it was worth his time. Chris targeting Gunner's drops. Definitely going to be losing those BCs. One drop and... Well, well they lost one. Uh, with the ground, he probably would be safe. Air battle going on. Exo's got drop ships. Probably thinking, do I even need to drop? Can we just go USA? So it's going to decide to drop. Finish off Scotland. Meanwhile, he has his tanks, all his heavy tanks, out on East. Extremely useful. Eight heavy tanks with upgrades. Big boys, 450. Five armor there. Yeah, so this is definitely the next goal. I don't think Exo wants to go out there unless he's got an air advantage. Sees all the wrath. Most likely heavily upgraded because he didn't have a long time there. You have the 3-2. Kind of check around the rest of the map. Germany, no infantry upgrades. And no BC upgrades. So that's... Uh, Goliath, no upgrades there. Nothing for Gunner. Nothing for Chris. Nothing for Exo. Okay, so we're pretty low on the upgrades. Really, only Russia and UK are getting any upgrades so far this game. Clearing out Athens. Generally you want to be doing this a little bit earlier than now, but it's better late than never. Sometimes uh, it's really hard to spare the tanks, because if you move the tanks away from the east and Russia attacks, he wipes out your bunker wall before you get your tanks into the fight. And that's not a fight you want to be taking. Generally Russia with the superior firepower than, than Italy. Graf uh, looks like it's going to be prioritizing UK. Just made a BC. So D Day at zero. You know this because of the tank trigger, the Russian tank trigger. When it comes up, you know D Day is at zero. Uh, you also know when Italy gets dropped that you only have a little bit of time for D Day. And immediately after D Day, the Italian carriers go right here. A little bit after, 410. So here's Fortress Great Britain getting started. Everyone knows the fight's going to be happening over these D-Day BCs. Exo starting the drop on Ireland. He's trying to get the drop on Ireland, trying to get the, uh, the Marines to be shooting up. Axis Air trying to engage the Allies. Allies not sure if they want this fight. They don't have the ground advantage, where this is where Exo is. And he, a little bit of misposition by Napo. He's going over Ireland. It's not where he wants to be. Itali uh, uh, of BCs of Germany has a, a big time air advantage over the wrath of Napoleon. Uh, four times the BCs, probably twice the, the light fighters. Uh, England, the best fight he's going to get is, is fighting over this land here. 
Uh, and this is a losing fight, unfortunately, for the Allies, and there's not much that Napoleon can do about this. Uh, it's just too much Axis troops. Drop is nice, but he needs Marines. So, so far that secures D-Day, but uh, you don't have the air advantage, so the D-Day BCs would spawn and would get instantly crushed by these German BCs. Probably want to kill D-Day here. Uh, so, it seems like Napoleon wants to save it if he can. Meanwhile, Krontoker is poking on east. He sees the BCs up by USA. And he figures this is a great time to knock out this wall. And he does just that. Knocks out four bunkers uh, before seeing the ground respond. And uh, actually, the, uh, the Axis have a tank advantage. If you count Spanish tanks on the eastern front, they, Russia doesn't have that tank advantage. Especially if you have some German tanks remaining. So... Norway being able to secure UK, which is instrumental when you want to spawn the D-Day trigger here. Germany wanting to knock out some of these drops and doing a successful job at that. If he can't get the uh, the D-Day, then he should try be trying for Oslo here. Probably the next highest level objective, or retaking. Uh, UK, but then you, you have to know that the BCs are here too. First things first, got to clear out this trigger. Uh, then it looks like uh, a big east. It looks like they're calling for Gunner to come uh, to come out there. Not able to break the wall because BCs were there for uh, a fair bit of time. Getting healed. A lot of damage on those. He's got his green ones out front. Meanwhile, ground troops getting destroyed. This is Messers playing a big part of the game again. We just saw Malo win a Germany game in team three, uh, uh, game three of the tournament, and in large part of how he was using his Messers. Carriers being able to safely get out. These still are the D-Day Marines. Able to clear buildings there. Able to get all the city buildings here. So allies are calling go. Uh, right now the Axis do have the advantage uh, in this game, but it's not by much. This is the late game allies uh, that they that you're able to get. You're able to get this big French army, another extra player, being able to micro, an extra drop. And this is just a smart move by Germany because if Russia sends, he still has most of his force back east. There you go, it's working, saying go east. Fran is suggesting to wait. BCs are in UK. Trying to clear this out. You cannot go east if BCs are in UK. I absolutely agree with Kron there. Goliath starting to get upgrades now. It's got 1-1. One, one. Still no ground upgrades. Should be able to start rebuilding his cybernetic core once you get that probe. Snap complaining about a land. And here they call. Kron being very quick on the pull, so is Gunner. So they're both very fast. They're uh, they're only gonna lose some. But uh, being pretty defensive. 
Axis falling back. And I like that decision there. Uh, you really, you, you do have uh, an advantage in this game. And you don't want to lose it going into Russia at this time. Uh, right now, being able to continually to fight for UK, uh, focusing on the Oslo attacks, uh, those are, are the main targets right now. If you know that the Russian army is, is somewhere up here, yes, you can send into Russia and, uh, and, and try to knock it out like once every turn or two when he's not expecting it. But here, Goldie's calling clear UK. Napoleon is saying to, uh, to east it, so uh, if the BCs are up here somewhere, then that could be far enough for the Allies to do a lot of damage. There you go, they're calling go. Yam's doing the right job, is retreating your army up into Scotland. If uh, Germany wants to clear it, then you're going to have to uh, take the time to go up there and be as far away from the Eastern Front as, as possible. So Gully doing a good job, removing the BCs, just keeping the scouts here. There you go, he's on his way back. Exo's going to get to tax at least a few of these cities. So core was rebuilt, but taken out once again. Norway saying he wants to land under the BCs. And here we have the fight we've all been waiting for. We have the... Late game, 30 minute fight, Spanish drops going underneath the BCs, Norwegian drops doing the same thing, going up to the side, Italian carriers join the battle, we're having a big uh, allied force making their way forward, Russia and France got an enormous ground force, and once they get coordinated with UK, are going to be able to take this fight, uh, but the air advantage does lie with the Axis, BCs, incredibly overwhelming, including the carriers here, this is the game, uh, can the, ac the allies take out this air, uh, are they able to get an overwhelming ground advantage, uh, as is, is, the, is the allies, and, and it looks like the answer is no, but uh, Axis are losing ground, Spanish tanks uh, are still doing huge damage, heavy tanks, and we're going to be waiting for the GG. It should be coming out soon. But I don't think the Allies can win here. They're going to be losing tanks. They're going to be starting to lose their air. Uh, I'm just waiting for it. This is, this is the power of, of all these non-fire-like BCs. It's, uh, it's, more, it's going to be more than enough. Nap is doing a lot of work. Knocked out the carriers. This does not mean the end of the game. He knocked out the carriers. And... And this game is gonna is gonna continue. Good air control by Napoleon, being able to get just enough. Yam's calling that he's got 14 drops, or 1400. I'm not quite sure. It's 1400. That's not very impressive, but understandable. It's hard to get attacks. German BCs are in medium to good shape. Probably average health is about six, seven hundred on them. Does have the probe out, so probably wants to start getting some Protoss buildings here by Berlin. Uh, probably be the smartest choice right now would be to Protoss up uh, Berlin, start healing your barrack, uh, your your bunkers, not your bunkers, your BCs, sorry, and. Uh, and look to be in another fight shortly. You want to be definitely coordinated with your Spain and your Italy. Uh, you cannot leave these BCs out to dry. Uh, you don't have the measures to protect them. You need ground. Goliath still with a good amount of, of cash remaining. Probably going to start pumping Marines, and he absolutely is now with these two barracks. You got an upgrade yet? No, 2-2. Two, two. Still 1-1 one, one on the uh, on the BCs. Russian tanks at 2-0. A little bit low for this time of the game. Krontofer knows what he's doing. 3-3 three, three in the Marines, but of course. Don't think Norway would get any, any upgrades yet, but I don't even see a troop. There he is, 2-2 two, two on that. No upgrades. Spain... Could possibly have a uh, 
upgrade on attack. But I don't see any VS loose men. There they are. 2-2. Two, two. No, no upgrade on him. There it is. Chris doing the uh, doing the job of guarding Berlin. Going ahead with the probe. It's going to take Kron Toker uh, a good 20 to 30 seconds to be able to get through all these buildings. Meanwhile, the Axis can stack behind in a, in a unified front. They're calling everyone. Exo does have these drops here. We're going to see. He's probably judging whether he's needed on East, and he absolutely is. Wrath is trying to find these BCs. Not too many Messers to protect them. They really need these drops. Exo, you got to get in there. This is gonna, the game is going to be decided. Drops on drops. BC's falling back. Messer is trying to do what they can, but there's not quite enough of them. Raf coming in, trying to target BC's, and they're being successful at it. Uh, looks like the drops are slightly in Spain's favor, uh, but not too, too much. Uh, more so than that. France coming in on the back side with, uh, with Dragoons, and they're able to get a good amount of damage, but there's not quite enough of them to, to do enough. But being able to pick up the rest of Italy's tanks... Good damage on the backside. Spain reinforcing with what they can. These BCs are not quite the powerful force as they used to be. About eight, eight or nine right now. Uh, so it's dangerous at this point to be building more BCs. Well, I don't think he, he can. He doesn't have the, uh, the, the bomber command. Uh, but for the reason being that you don't have the messers to protect it. Once again, he rebuilt the fueling bay, uh, got that up again, very, very nice and fast. And you're going to be wanting to get the Protoss wall up here within the next minute or two before the Allies can have a chance to attack again. Goliath definitely needs to be pumping to a full 115 here. He's got 5k, he's got a good 40 supply, so you want to be getting your 40 Marines, a couple of SCVs to start healing these BCs. They are fairly well, only two of them are on the 600 range rest around the 7 800 hit points. Napoleon poking. This has become a marathon of a game. Napoleon uh, waiting for his match must be chomping at the tooth. He wants to get these games going on. He lives for these matches. His activity increased dramatically for the last tournament. He wants to play. He missed the games yesterday. He heard his team got two wins. He wants to get two wins for his team and we're gonna see if it happens. Uh, but meanwhile in this game uh, Axis have had the advantage uh, for most of it. Having UK They've never lost to Algiers, and yeah, being be able to have a huge air force. The air force is no longer a thing. Chris spending a significant amount to defend Af uh, Berlin, so he's trying bunkers instead of uh, Protoss buildings and then and then ground troops. So we're going to see if that. Uh, combination works out a little bit better. Spanish tanks doing a lot of work on East. Exo's got SCVs there to repair not only them uh, but possibly BCs and bunkers. There he's sending four more so he's gonna have a total of seven SCVs on, on, the, on the Eastern Front. Right now if you've got a, a, like a lot of troops down here in Africa and it hasn't been attacked in forever and you see France keep going east time and time again you want to be trying to pull these troops or you want to be trying to poke out these cities here you want to control this city and this city uh, you can't just have those troops sitting there for uh, four or five turns and hey we're all guilty of that but this is a very high level game going on right now and uh, Italy it, it does have some troops down there Different area for the Protoss buildings. So a slight bunker wall, bunker wall, Protoss buildings in the middle. I really like this setup. Very innovative by Chris, pushing the envelope. And he should just fill this whole area up here just when he gets the money, which he just got right now. Can't upgrade Chris. That is his Marines. 
because his engineering bay was taken out uh, by Napoleon around the med, uh, med trigger with Wrath down there in Africa, a little bit strange, but pretty effective. Exo using his probe, won't be around for long. The lend lease being protected by these drops. Would not be a good idea to drop in this area. I think the allies need to keep doing what they're doing. Uh, keep pushing on east. You've got the BC fleet down. Uh, by east I mean you can go either east, you can go uh, down here in Balks, you can go low, like down along this angle. I just mean uh, as Norway, don't be don't be trying to go for tax at this point. You're you're almost done winning the game. Just take it home, win the game, do what's working for you. There's Napoleon poking, not quite like liking this static game. Wants to put his uh, air to some use. Nice tight formation by him. Kind of uh, giving his allies information here. He sees the BCs. Basically, this is giving Krontok with the green light to go. Here, Yams pulling all the way up to here. Probably can't do that because of his uh, his supply depot. Napoleon saying, hey, you got tanks? Well, tanks are good at taking out uh, bunkers. If BCs aren't there, all the better. There's Yams. He's calling UK, but his team is not calling UK. His team doesn't want him to do this. He's doing this by himself. Better have a lot of fire bats if this is the type of drop that you're doing. And that's going to get crushed by, uh, by EXO. And that's why your team wasn't calling this. Uh, Yam's going to get a big, big price, unfortunately, for trying to do something solo. Do you understand the desire? You want to help your team out. You've got a lot of drops. You feel confident. Uh, but uh, thankfully, you didn't lose more than, than that. Big investment by Exo. He knows there's no pressure here in Africa. He's free to either go east, which he is, or and or going the UK. And uh, one of the few people building the missile turrets right here. Knops already planned to keep taking this out. And uh, if Exo puts a big investment into UK, which he looks like he's doing, then if you can take this out, uh, it's going to be a swing over to the Allies' favor, but trying to take out all these missile turrets with air is not going to go well. So um, EXO has been very smart to, to build all these air. It's for a reason. It's because NAPO's got a lot of air, because Russia's got some. The Allies didn't have that much raft. He wouldn't be building this many missile turrets. Observer in this game. I'm sure we're just getting ready for the match. So they're trying a strategy. So they're trying, they're saying, okay, France, Jer uh, Russia, you poke. The BCs are going to send to this to this line. You're then going to uh, attack from the north here uh, with the BCs, drop into this area, and then push, push down. There's another person who was in the game. Hopefully balls can still match after. Would like to get a second match. I uh, unfortunately missed the matches yesterday, but uh, would love to cast a second match. Was able to cast the third one, but uh, had a little bit of technical issues. Wasn't able to pick up the first five or ten minutes of it, but was able to get the rest of it nice and clear. Real treat of a game. 
you ever want to watch. Uh, I should link it here after you've done this video. If I'm really proactive, I should do that. Kron getting a little bit frustrated here. Just wanting to get something done. For BCs, this is incredibly difficult to take. You, you probably don't need this missile turret here. Uh, I can see a, a use for the rest of them. Exo looking to retake these islands. He's not going to get... Is he going to get... Yeah, he's going to get this before 2, the USA. Uh, and then he's going to get this for the next turn. So you don't want to be dropping here unless you've got a lot of fire bats or a combination of tank fire bats. This will work because he's dropping on the smaller portion. Should keep these around just in case. Okay, so I'm just going to keep a small force here with the bunker. Kind of uh, go to uh, Exo into doing, a, uh, doing his next major drop here, kind of taking a, a half turn to do that. But the reason Exo can make all these turrets is because he's been taxing Algiers, UK, Ireland for so long. Maybe not Ireland here, but definitely UK. So he's got a 143 man count, and he's making a million missile turrets. Even knocking these Protoss buildings out, at least, at least you keep the uh, the axis on their toes, make them send a force down here, then you can maybe go with the tanks up here. All right, BCs closing in. Tanks are gonna knock out a couple of bunkers before the BCs come in, but not too many, just two. France is gonna come in on the side. This is a great position for the dragoons here. Uh, still a lot of bunkers up. Spanish tanks holding the top. They are going to be successful in doing so, uh, unless Norway drops on them. But Exo looks like he's ready for that. He's pulling back. And this is how much he values these heavy tanks. And look how much work they're doing on the east. BCs getting around the Protoss buildings. It has tanks underneath. Meanwhile, Krontoker going up high north. He's going in combination with Yams, who did drop part of his drop. Could be the entire drop. There's just only some of it left. Went north to engage on to the heavy tanks and to continue the flank. Able to get a decent flank on the top side. Uh, Napoleon's RAF getting in onto the Messers. There's still penny, uh, there's still Yams drops. He still has some. He's going to drop down with the tanks. And Kron Toker is looking like he wants to reorganize with his uh, 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 other allies, France and Norway. UK getting some free pot shots on the on the tanks. But that's not his primary shot. He's looking to take out one of these BCs. Now he's looking for a different angle. Nice shots onto the Messers. And ground advantage for the Allies here onto the BCs. But now, now that's just changed. BCs reposition. And tanks are now underneath with uh, the helpful Marines shooting upwards. Uh, they should be able to clear this out. But uh, very successful. This is, uh, this is what the Allies wanted to do. Uh, they took out a good portion of the Axis ground, uh, but the disadvantage is that, uh, meanwhile, Exo wasn't even necessarily there entirely, only his tanks were there. He still has Fortress Great Britain, he now has Fortress USA, he's now going to start aggressively dropping. He's not going to take the bait and go Canada, he's going to try to take these troops and put them somewhere else, possibly east. Uh, but meanwhile, as I was talking and showing the different fortresses of Spain, the wrath of Napoleon able to pick off these BCs, and that's going to be enough to take this game. 
this is uh, this is the precarious situation of of Axis, is that being ahead for the whole game, and they weren't being able to, being able to deal that that killer blow. Uh, they didn't put a lot of pressure onto Norway. They only put a little bit, as you can see by some buildings being destroyed here. And uh, they never put any aggression onto Wells or the Middle East or Egypt. And then they just went the Russia that uh, either once or twice. Maybe they went twice. Uh, but they were very half-hearted attacks. And I liked the decision at the time, but uh, in hindsight, they weren't able to do anything uh, until... Uh, well, they, they weren't able to do anything after that, and the Allies slowly came back. And here Yam's just putting the nail in the coffin. They're just trying to kill out all these buildings. Really, there's nothing that the Axis can do to kill all these tanks. Yeah, they got a couple of their own. They just got a trigger. Chris is trying to pump Marines to get any sort of semblance of an army. Exos able to fight back just barely, but it's a, it's a big turnover for the Allies. Big push, Gunner's decision or his team's decision to have France go, go east paid off big. Having Yams constantly t retake uh, UK and then deciding to go keep going on east, also very well timed. Napoleon's air control has uh, has exploited uh, the occasional BCs out by Goliath. And here, Chris looks like he's going to pull uh, Africa, and he absolutely has to pull Africa now. He's got the red ID, he's got the drops there. Uh, you drop here, the uh, allies maybe attack you a little bit preemptively, and you can maybe get a flank on them with these uh, with this little bit of army. So it's just too many tanks. It's the issue. It's it's tanks versus marines, and tanks win that battle. Pulling it yet? No, he hasn't pulled it yet, but it still it still would be over, I believe, even if he pulled it. So here, Yams is going to drop on top of the army, which is exactly what he wants to do. This is the main force of the Axis, which is now gone. When France gets to this point, it's enough, and there it is. Wow, what a long game! I gotta say, I'm gonna estimate 45 minutes on this game. Don't have the game timer out. I got a pretty good idea. 43 and a half. And it was close. It was close by the Axis. They uh, they just had to do a little bit more. A little bit more, one one or two things to go right, and it would have worked.